All right, guys, I'm going to um, I'm going to do this syllabus point, but I don't have anything prepared, so it's not going to be as um, my flow won't be as good. Um, but we did 2.1 um, H 2.1 trans social, global, political, economic and environmental. But also part of 2.1 is this syllabus point here, which we don't really like to talk about that much, which is kind of an issue. Um, historical and cultural influences on designing and producing. Because even though we've got the five trends, there's a lot of stuff that because of our changing social trends, because of our diversity, because of our changing nature of work and different technological trends, because of these things, these things also influence design and production. They also um, encourage designers to get ideas and make and, and create stuff. So we need to have a bit of a look at these, but I'm going to just do it by reading the textbook um, and... Yeah, it's not going to be great, but, you know, sometimes it just helps when someone's talking about it, I think. So um, historical and cultural. We looked at social trends before. We were looking at present day um, examples, but um, we also need to look at the influence of um, social issues over time. Um, and that can include like the, the changing trends in our society, um, how cultural diversity has changed, the changing nature of work and technological change that's also come from that. So um, the introduction of new cultures through migration, as well as the economy, changing lifestyles and family structures, that's a good one, um, they've really changed what's, what we have now. So, like, for example, modern migration to Australia, um, as well as world events and policies, um, that we've had different immigration policies that have meant different types of people have come during the white Australia policy. Um, you know, it was very hard for people to migrate, um, we had like a big influx of European migration, um, but it would have been hard for, you know, Indians to come at that time and stuff like that. Anyway, the point is um, with surges of different periods of migration, such as gold rush and during the wars and other conflicts, um, our immigrants have introduced many different customs, foods and, um, and cultures into our society. And therefore we have new products and innovations not seen previously, such as the electric wok. So for example, before we had Asian people here, we didn't have the need for an electric wok. Um, and previous to that, even in like China and stuff, their woks weren't electric because um, technology hadn't progressed that far. But once we had the immigration here and we had all these Chinese people here and different you know, Vietnamese and Thai and stuff, um, wok cooking became um, sort of a thing that was almost normal, um, particularly in restaurants and stuff like that. And so a technological development is the electric walk and in innovation. But that would never have been developed if we didn't have Asian people coming to live here. So it, it's it's a direct correlation. Now you can use a lot of your immigrant, um, a lot of your multicultural examples from when we talked about trends as well. Okay, so changing social trends. So this is all about the way we live our day-to-day -day lives and how that's changed over time. So with different things that have happened in the world, such as women's liberation, so um, you know our, um, our women's ability to vote and participate more in society, um, as well as women being able to have access to jobs and politics, that's your voting, and education as well. Like we don't we don't have to finish school at year 10. Like we, we have access to year 11 and 12. I mean, for a really long time, OLMC was the last stop for girls. Dela Cronulla was only for the boys. Um, girls didn't go to year 12. Um, even my um, my mum's friends, um, a lot of my mum, she went to um, Mary Immaculate at Sutherland, but um, her friends that went to OLMC, they had to also go to a Mary Immaculate at Sutherland to do year 11 and 12, um, at, like, which is the girls' version of St Pat's, because there was no year 11 and 12 version attached to the OLMC DLA system. So, And that wasn't even that long ago. <clears throat> so... Um, the number of women returning to work after childbirth has just increased. Like who, how many people do you know now? And even out of your parents, like how many of them never returned to work after having babies? Not many. It's the norm. Like I would expect that when I have a baby, I'm not going to just like not be, go back to teaching. Um, I, but that, that has created different opportunities to work part time, to job share. All these things have come about because of that whole, um, um, returning to work after childbirth and the cost of living requiring us to do that. Um, so then it relates to the economy. Also, women are having children later. Anyway, 
what's the point of this? So, uh, and there's all these other things. So obviously single parent families, which means like you can't just be a stay at home mom if you're the only mom, like, and there's no other working parent, um, grandparents looking after people, same sex marriages, all these different things um, that have led to advancements in communication technologies. So all of these things have kind of made um, our ability to work from home and telecommute um, easier. So a lot of design development has gone into um, our laptops and um, phones and things that allow us to actually have access to our workplace um, pretty much 24-7. Like, look at me, I've just had a whole week off work, but I've been doing stuff for school the whole time, absolutely the whole time. I've been in contact with you guys, I've been recording these things, I've been in contact with Mrs. Morrison, Mrs. Kennedy. Um, yeah, I've just, yeah, <laughs> there's just so, and, and across so many different platforms, emails, um, um, what's it called? Instagram, Facebook Messenger. Just there's so many different platforms that I am able to um, telecommute and still work from home. Um, yeah, so that's definitely the, our our changing social trends have definitely led to design opportunities. Um, Okay, let's go down to cultural diversity. I don't feel like I really need to talk too much about this because it's very similar to where we talked about multiculturalism. But um, just as a recap, we've got to also remember that the that a lot of things um, change and develop because of our changing diversity. So once upon a time, we were very European, um, whereas now we are very much Asian and Southeast Asian and Middle Eastern coming in. And that's where you get those school uniform examples. Um, also, there's... Um, some, an area of, of Victoria, somewhere in Melbourne, um, it's now compulsory for kindergarten in primary school students, they must learn Hindi. And you think, why? Well, because with the amount of, um, with the amount of um, Indian and uh, Sri Lankan migration and stuff that, that's in, coming to Australia now and, and operating our businesses and stuff, it's actually probably more, um, more realistic for um, Australian kids to learn Hindi than it is for them to learn French because they're more likely to come to across uh, an, a Hindi speaker in their everyday lives in their own country than they ever are a French person. So, you know, this is how, it, you know, things are changing. Um, it's important that designers are aware of our cultural diversity in our country and that we respect and celebrate cultural differences in our designs. Um, <clears throat> that's cool. Is that related to? I'm not sure. Okay, changing nature of work, all of this, but there's been lots of different changes that have happened because of different like world events, such as, you know, world, the world wars, um, different um, periods where we've, we've um, the society has fought for workers' rights, for legislation around minimum wage, um, you know, the pay gap between women and men. Um, um, an amazing movie is uh, Made in Dagenham, um, and it's a true story about the women that worked for Ford, the car people. And they used to do all the manu the um, all the seat covers and stuff, and they fought for better wages because they were classified under unskilled, and their pay rate rate was really low. And they went on strike, and basically, like car manufacturing stopped all over the world because these women stopped going to work, and it was like the biggest drama ever. And um, yeah, anyway, that's definitely a movie that you should watch. Um, but yeah, so World War Two um, also had, there's so many world events that have um, led to different things like the ability to work part time, different emphasis on education. Um, children didn't, what didn't have to um, go to school before they, they often had to need to go in the workplace and help support the family until it became um, illegal to not be schooled. Um, so like, yeah, there's lots of different stuff that's gone on um, that has led to, you know, different um different forms of design and, and production so computerization of the workplace is probably like the biggest thing ever um they really that computerization and um, like technological change has meant that like humans are replaced by a lot of um computers and robotics um and and this has happened like the industrial revolution also changed this as well um it's mean that we have a lot more um time saving uh, machinery I'll, I'll give you an example like of just something and how it's had an impact. So look at the, <laughs> so think of something as simple as like cotton to make dresses. So to make clothes. So um, back in the 17, 1800s, up until the American civil war, the slaves were picking the cotton. 
Look at this Baba. Oh my gosh, look at him with his little sack on his back to collect the cotton. So that it all had to be done by hand. Slaves were picking the cotton and putting it into baskets. Um, now, and this is like devastating, can you imagine if they could see this, like it's full on. Look at all of that cotton just being sucked in by these trucks. It's like once upon a time there had to be like hundreds of slaves going and hand picking and cutting their hands the whole time. And now look at that. Oh my gosh. Anyway, <clears throat> so yeah, that's just one truck with one man to do this whole field in a few hours versus all of these slaves working for free, um, I'd add. Now, I want to show you what the impact of this was. So um, after the American Civil War, when um, when slavery was abolished um, in the United States, the American, uh, sorry, the African slave trade, and they weren't allowed to have slaves, you weren't allowed to own slaves anymore. So what happened? So with all the slaves running the fields, this was the fashion at the time in the 1850s and 60s. These huge crinolines, um, I'll show you, like, look. And they had the, look at the, pe look underneath. See? The crinoline with the timber and it keeps the dress out. But look at the metres and metres and metres of fabric in those big skirts. Anyway, um, <clears throat> So yeah, that was the fashion to have these massive, massive skirts um, with a crinoline underneath, meters and meters and meters. Now, what happened after the American Civil War when um, plantation owners actually had to pay people to pick their cotton? They'd be like, wow, um, I can't afford to pay like, some, some plantations had like 400 slaves, as if you can pay all these people. Um, so what happened? The fashion changed. So look what happened. There's 10 years later when that, um, this is, this is 18, 1860s this is 1870s look at the difference in the fashion the skirts it became fashionable to have a um, sort of a slim line dress with a sort of um, ruffles and bustles at the back but you only need probably half if not less than half the amount of fabric to put that together and so you can see how a change in a world event and legislation had a direct impact on design. Designers had to actually change the fashion because it was not affordable to produce garments with so much fabric um, anymore. So yeah, I think that's that's a good example for historical. Same thing happened um, in during World War Two. Actually, look up like so like okay. So look at the 1930s. Look at the skirt. Look at the fabric in the skirt lots and lots of fabric in the 1930s they didn't necessarily have a lot of petticoats but there's a lot of fabric that makes that skirt swing out and yeah ankle length um or mid calf length and a lot of fabric in the skirt to allow for swing okay anyway then world war ii broke out and obviously um, all the farmers had to be off to war, so there were rations on fabric. And so obviously the fashion then had to change. So the, the designers changed the fashion. So if we look at like this thing from the notebook, we can see, we can't look at the, how slim line that is, 1940s, really slim. Oh, I saw your picture in the paper. I saw your picture in the paper. <laughs> the one with you in the house, and I just wanted to come and see if you were okay. I mean, I, I wasn't in the neighborhood or anything, I just... <laughs> Are you okay? Are you okay? I'm stupid when I shouldn't come. Anywho, we get the gist of the slim line. But then if we look at what happened in the 50s after the war when you could, um, there were fabric availabilities again and they went off rations, look at all that fabric. And petticoats. That's when Christian Dior designed the new look. So we look at Christian Dior. Dior new look. So this was <clears throat> the new look 
um, which came out at the end of the 40s so and then that shaped what the 50s fashion would be so at the time um, when Christian Dior releases a lot of people were like no that is irresponsible use of fabric fabric was still on rations in the UK um, but it was a success and it freed women women needed um, to feel pretty again after the war so it was a success